believe it or not, a 30 second TikTok would take two hours. No. Because, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to You Cannot, and we have another episode today. Quite interesting. We have a TikTok star in the room with us. And today's episode is sponsored by Skate. So today we have Kyle Harrison with us, the TikTok star. Hey, what's up, everybody? Man, don't say that. You know, <laughs> I, I really just got lucky. Um, really, I mean, TikTok is, is such a blessing. You know, I, I think it's the best thing that has ever happened to the internet, both as a creator and a consumer. Like, I don't really spend time on a lot of the other platforms now. Like, most of my time is just spent on TikTok. I don't know about you guys. Although you're a TikTok star, you also have your own business. You do digital marketing. Oh, that's right. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've never had a nine to five. And most people don't believe that when, when I tell them that the only jobs I ever had was like working a summer job at a local Burger King when I was a kid, you know, which I got fired from also, unfortunately. But uh-huh. how, do you, how, do you jug- how do you juggle that, man? Like you need to find time to like, set up your phone and then do your TikTok thing. Uh, and then after that, you also have to run your business. You know, how do you do that? Oh, it's hard, man. It, it's impossible. And so I really respect a lot of the creators out there, especially those with full-time jobs and mm. full-time businesses, because it's really not easy. Um, we all have only 24 hours in a day. And so the thing, I've tried many different hacks and, and techniques of, you know, how to produce content. Right. Um, and some of the bigger creators talk about batching content. I think that's great. Batching content. Because I used to record just one video a day. Oh, okay. And it would take me like, believe it or not, a 30 second TikTok would take two hours. No. Because, yeah, I start with the ideation. Right. And then I go to scripting the video and then I have to rehearse it. And then I have to film it. Now, get this. Most people don't believe me when I tell them this, but I'm actually an introvert. I'm really shy and I'm really camera shy. So it's hard. Like I've got to muster up this courage to be like, all right, Kyle, it's showtime. Let's do this. Turn on the lights and, you know. But honestly, kudos to you because I myself, I'm an introvert. No way. Yeah, we are getting to go. (laughs) Have fun, bro. Yeah. So it's never an excuse, right? Even if you're introvert, you still have to put yourself out there. You still have to go and, you know, do what you need to do if you are passionate in something. Uh, In this same being said, if you're interested in creating content, you still have to be in front of the camera. There's no way to run. Absolutely. And I think a lot of your favorite creators might be introverts. Like I've seen some of their vlogs where they talk about it. Um, and you're surprised to, to hear that, to hear them say it because you mm. would have never imagined them to be to be introverts. Right. But then again, it's also to a certain extent believable because right now, if you you, if you can actually see the setup of the room, right, it's just you, me and the camera. La. There's That's nobody true. else. Right? So there's no um, pressure, right? There's no eyes prying on you. So you feel a little bit more safe. That's true. You know what? This is actually a lot better than when I'm at home or in a studio right. filming my own TikTok or YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. It sounds kind of odd, but there's a lot more pressure there than being in front of a crowd. Oh, why? This is just awkward. Have you tried talking to a camera? Just like a yeah. talking head video? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's weird, man. I have like a... Okay, this is a quite embarrassing, right? So I have like an old YouTube video where I do like tutorials on how to edit and stuff, right? Oh, cool. I remember the process of it. It was infuriating because of the sound, right? Because you're recording in your room, right? And there's bound to be a lot of sound. So recording that was a challenge and that's the only frustration I had. But like compared to recording in like live in front of people, uh, that was more... That was uh, more... That's interesting because I, I always anxiety, feel that yeah. it's a lot easier to just present to a whole bunch of people mm. versus to record on a video where like I feel I have to be perfect and I cannot make a mistake. But, but, but what if, if you mess up your lines or your words? Like in real life, it's like here in this podcast, if I mess up my lines, it's fine <laughs> yeah. because that's just the nature of this content right. versus if it's an eight minute YouTube video mm-hmm. and I'm delivering that piece of content, I cannot afford to stammer or stutter at all. Uh, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I might, true, I might lose the audience retention if I do that too much. Yeah. So that's that's the thing with with making YouTube videos. But yeah, it's just really awkward talking to to a camera. Um, and I've tried different things. I've tried using a teleprompter. I thought it was going to be easier, but it's not necessarily the case. Like you mentioned before, you actually create content and you share it online. And the kind of content you create is actually to educate people. Right. Can you tell us a little bit more about your TikTok account and the kind of content you produce and why you do that? Absolutely, man. Um, see, we got to go way back. Let me take you back. All right, press 20- the time machine button. <laughs> <laughs> Taking you back to 2020 in the depth of COVID. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I was living in Chiang Mai in Thailand. We were right. you know, trying the digital nomad lifestyle. My girlfriend and I, it was one of the best times of our lives. 
And unfortunately, we had to come back pretty abruptly because of COVID. We couldn't get our visas renewed. Mm. So then I was here during the lockdown. This was like in March, April 2020. This was when everybody was stuck at home. Mm-hmm. So I had downloaded TikTok a while before that, while I was still in Chiang Mai, just messing around with it. Right. But in Singapore, everybody was stuck at home. And I didn't know what to do with my time. And so I started making TikTok videos. My girlfriend was was making fun of me. She was like, oh, this is ridiculous. You know, it's like, it's like an app for teenage girls. Like, why am I on it? And I started out, believe it or not, making dance videos. Like, I was about silly, to ask. <laughs> silly, ridiculous dance videos. You know, those trending videos. Yeah. And I got no views. Like, I think I got one, two, five views and some of them maybe. Mm. Um, I was disappointed. But then I accepted the fact that it was largely because I'm not a pretty girl. Uh, and nobody wants to see a dude with a beard dancing on TikTok. You'd be surprised because like with all the dance challenges now, right? Even dudes with beards get a lot of views. Maybe now. Maybe I should probably start a second account and just do dances. <laughs> right? yeah, we could do like dance challenges. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I realized I had to pivot and talk about something else or do something else mm. on, on my TikTok videos. And I thought about it. There weren't very many at a time. And so I thought of sharing my experience with entrepreneurship, with personal finance, with building businesses, because that's all I've, I've done in my life. And that's all I ever know because I've never had a nine to five job. Right from the time when I left the army, I've just built different businesses, you know, you name it, I've done it, whatever, online drop shipping, network marketing, selling, selling courses, you know, running seminars, all sorts of things. We even did like um, uh, bags and accessories. Like I would order products from China and, right. you know. All this from home. From home, I never had an office. Huh. What was the most notable client that you've worked with? Uh, you just name drop, bro. <laughs> notable <laughs> client? It. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've worked with FedEx. I've worked with Ray-Ban. Wow. Uh, yeah, so they were, they were a fun bunch to work with. Uh, like now you know who to look for if you want Ray-Ban. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I mean, yeah, you get paid and you get all this free stuff and, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. So, yeah, let me tell you. Um, so when I started making videos about personal finance and entrepreneurship, just sharing things that I've done before and what yeah. worked and, you know, my mistakes, my failures, people started commenting and asking for ways to make money at home. Right. You know, because everybody was worried about their jobs and financial security. And so I started sharing about side hustles and stuff that actually works. Because a lot of the content you see online are scams. You just do that to, to get the views, to get the clicks. Yeah, like um, five steps for you to achieve something like that. Yeah. And then they lead you to sign up for something. For a course, and you yeah. pay $1,000. and right. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to share practical, simple steps that you can take mm-hmm. to not become a millionaire, but maybe make an extra 100 for $200 a week sort of thing, you know? Uh. So it actually works. And those videos blew up. Like, there was one that just overnight had hundreds of thousands of views and a couple others had millions of views. There was one video at the peak got close to 10 million views. 10 million views. Yeah. What was the advice for that video? Oh, that was, that was this, um, what was that? That was drop servicing. That was oh. about drop servicing. So you guys probably might have heard of the concept of drop shipping. When you run an e-commerce store, but you're just a storefront, you don't have any products. When right. somebody buys, it connects to a factory in China and then they ship it to your customers. That's drop shipping. We do the same thing, but with services. And like with all the advice that you gave, right? Reaching, you know, even 100 million, 100 million views. Total on my account, probably. Yeah, yeah I think. Right? Maybe, yeah. So with that amount of reach, has anyone ever uh, personally came up to you, right? And then tell you, right? Hey, I've, I've applied what you said online, you yeah. know, what you thought. And it happened, you know, I actually succeeded. Yes, that has happened, and that it's one of the most meaningful experiences I've ever had. Um, but before I get to that, let me just share with you. Okay, so I was talking about how you know the video started getting views, and then I, the followers started coming in, and then I had brands reaching out to me right. to asking for sponsorships, and I'm like, damn. I'm an influencer now. This is crazy, <laughs> bro. Like, wow, I'm going to get paid to, to talk about. So I'm going to make these videos anyway for yeah. free, right? Yeah. And now I, I'm getting paid. So it, it's really cool. And then what happened was one time I think we were out having supper. My my brother-in-law, my girlfriend and I were having supper at one of my favorite supper spots in Singapore. Um, and then there was a bunch of boys, like teenage boys. I don't know, like, you know, army age boys. Um, they... They were at another table and I was walking past and they said, hey, excuse me, are you the TikTok guy? And then all of them were like, oh yeah, we, you know, we watch your videos. 
And my girlfriend from right. the other from our table took a video of this, <laughs> and when I watched it back, I was a lot more excited than them. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, you guys watch my videos? Cool! You like, guys recognize me? Yeah, you right? know me? <laughs> it's insane, you know? Because like, never in a million years would I imagine to be like quote unquote famous yeah. in, in any sense, right? Like, well, for people to, to recognize me through my content, and I thought that 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 felt really special, and yeah, so it's like I was just so. Elated that whole night. I'm like, wow, because it, it's different. Like on TikTok, you see all the numbers, you see the analytics and the stats. Yeah. But to see the real people that are watching your videos and generally like it, and you know, would talk to you on on the street. Um, so that happened a couple of times. Another one, I was having lunch with a friend, and then these two guys came up, and then they say hi. You know, um, we watch your TikTok videos, and so yeah. Um, this time around, thankfully, I was a little bit more composed. I'm like, okay, cool, all right, Kyle, keep it, keep it, <laughs> keep, it keep it chill. You know. And then, but there was this one guy though. This one guy in particular, he came up to me, and it was like a, a heartfelt thing. I felt very emotional. He shook right. my hand, and he was like, "Man, like, he didn't know if this would actually work, but he kept seeing my videos every day. They would come up on his FYP, and it's like, you know what? I'm gonna give this a try." And he tried it out. Um, I can't remember what it was because I talk about a lot of different side hustle ideas. It was like yes. selling custom things, selling custom mats, or like uh, coasters or whatever. On Etsy, yeah. right? So the business model is very simple. You hire a designer on Fiverr. You either create your own website or you just list it on an Etsy store, and he did just that, and that allowed him to make a couple hundred dollars more a month. So it's not a lot of money, but I mean, you know, different people have different financial situations. Right. But he was just so grateful, and I felt that gratitude, and and yeah, it just made me really emotional. Like, would you say uh, like that is uh, it gave it gave you a sense of fulfillment? Oh, definitely. That's a reason why I want to continue making videos. Uh, you know, and a lot of times I don't feel like making videos because I'm busy. I'm tired. I'm, I'm running my my full time business, right? Right. But when I think of the impact that we can create, you know, in 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 our own little way, it might not even be real altruism. It just might be, you know. A selfish thing for me to feel feel good about myself, yeah. you know. But whatever it is, I feel like I I like to be able to do that. What you just mentioned right, is a to me, I think it's a different form of engagement. It's physical engagement and being able to see the direct impact you have on others. Yeah, uh, nothing beats that. And I think a lot of creators who are as sincere, right? That's exactly why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Like you, you see a lot of like famous uh, YouTubers. Uh, maybe like Markiplier stuff like that. You know, if you like gaming, right? Right. Like the reason why it is they continue making the content they do is because not only do they love it, right? But it's because it's impacting the community that they are part of as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so definitely. I, so yeah. Um. It that that's one of the most fulfilling things about making TikTok videos. Do, do you have the community in mind first before you actually created the content? Like, no, I had no idea. I was just you know. Stabbing in the dark. I was just <laughs> really, yeah. I was just messing around, and then it blew up, and then now there are people following me. Mm. You know, That's it's great. it's it's crazy, yeah. And um, till today, I haven't been as active as I would want to on TikTok, and that's going to change because you know I'm starting with my batching process again, right? Because it kind of had to take a back seat while I was starting my my agency in the first couple of months. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thinking of all of this, like I miss that. I miss the DMs, um, you know, of people saying uh, how grateful they are, or even sometimes, you know, I don't get everybody, you know, coming with a success story, but people yeah. come to me to ask questions, like, and that shows me that they actually took action of some form. They saw the video and they didn't just like it and saved it for later and forgot about it, but they actually went to try out the thing that I talked about on the video. Mm -hmm. You know, so that makes me um, feel really happy to see that. Uh, and that also provides you with an opportunity to have like a, a collaboration content creation with those who actually did, you know, like uh, carry, carried out the advice you gave. Like, would it, wouldn't that not be great? Oh, yeah. I haven't so, thought about that. Yeah, to Kyle plus one. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That, that's, a, that's a great idea. Like we could review that, right? Somebody mm -hmm. who actually um, took, applied what you took, say yeah. and then tried it out and then just... Let him hear the story. You're the one hosting, mm -hmm. so you'll be in my chair, and they'll be in your. Oh, definitely, chair. <laughs> man. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm here to steal your job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If someone is trying to be in your shoes, right? Is there any form of 
you know naturally people will think like do I need to be trained in certain things before I do something like so uh, do they need to have any formal education in a certain field or like you know do they need to undergo through a certain intense training program like what do they need to be you uh, don't be me I mean be, be you be the best version of all <laughs> of us you know uh, um, but to be someone who does what I do yeah. is probably what you're getting at um That's an interesting question. You know, for many years, I have always believed that formal education is overrated. Mm. Is that true? But it's different now. My perspective has changed. When I'm in this position that I'm in, when I'm a director of a marketing agency and I'm hiring talent, mm. I actually look at their educational, ac- uh, academic credentials. Right. Because it shows you the type of character that they have you know if if they've got straight A's and they've got a high GPA it shows that they're disciplined and that they are committed and they take their work seriously you know it kind of shows the, the because if you compare it to like my grades in school yeah. I probably wouldn't make a very good employee because I'm always <laughs> you know skirting around finding loopholes and thinking yeah. how do I get, take shortcuts to get whatever I need to do done um, which isn't necessarily the best kind of employee that you want to have Right. but coming back to the question of How how does one get to this level of being a content creator or running different businesses? I think you just have to... Okay, this is going to be a little bit controversial. Okay. First of all, some people just have it and some don't. I'm just going to put it out there. No, I agree with you. Like, uh, that is... I agree with this because uh, you see it on a daily basis. Maybe some people can flip. 50 more burgers than you can mm. and that's just efficiency he can do that and you can't you know and then automatic, automatically makes you obsolete and you can't help that alright yeah so that's yeah I agree true. like um, I've seen some people no look okay here's a disclaimer I don't mean to be putting anyone down at all you know I I um, especially when in the space of content creation which I'm in yeah. I'm always rooting for everybody to succeed but sometimes you know I I see a video that comes up And I just feel so bad for the guy. Like he's trying really hard, but I don't know how to put it nicely. But like you know, maybe like you say, he could possibly be be more talented in a different area. Yeah, you know, like Probably. it's not the best use of his time and his skill and his his knowledge, right? Like he could contribute to to a a, a, a bigger team or whatever in in a different area. Yeah, I hope I don't get cancelled for this. But really, this is just um. I'm coming from a sincere and genuine place that first of all you either have it or you don't and how do you know whether you have it or, or not Yeah, it's tricky because you can't just rely on your friends and family they're going to have preconceived notions of you Yeah, you know like how my my big sister will always see me as a, her little brother she would never see me as a grown up man mm. um, and that's just the way it is so how do you find it for yourself? um When you have had enough people tell you this, like so many people have told me that I've got a radio DJ voice and I should be a radio DJ mm. throughout my entire life. Like that's been a constant thing. Right. I haven't considered becoming a radio DJ. This is one of my closest experience <laughs> to like doing a radio type show. I mean, I've been on radio interviews when I was in the hip hop scene. Right. Um, you were doing hip hop as well. I was a rapper, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Please do not ask things. me to spit some bars <laughs> right now on this show. Maybe at the end of the, you know, at the, end of oh, the show, you, gotta... you got a beatbox for me. <laughs> oh, but sure. But um, sure. okay, so so yeah, some people either have it or they don't. Um, but if you want to do it, I think internship interning is one of the most underrated things Mm. because that can really shortcut your learning curve dramatically Mm -hmm. let's say if you're an aspiring social media marketer and you intern at an agency especially a small one a startup agency for like three months that's going to beat any college class that you could ever take because nothing teaches you quite like real life hands-on experience right you know what i mean and And that's something you did Uh, no, I mean, I didn't do internships, but I, I just got to work. I just started reaching out to potential clients. And right. I, here's a funny story. My first ever web design client, this was like 15 years ago. Wow. Oh, Jesus, I just revealed my age. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe was like 10 years ago. And the fact that you're on this show, right, means you're still young. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, now, uh, uh, my first web design client right. that hired me, At the time, I had no knowledge of web design at all. I knew nuts about web development or coding or design. Right. I just said yes to the job, send them the bill, like the deposit, 
and then I scrambled and figured things out. I was like calling everybody. Who did you know anybody who could you know help me out with this web design? So thankfully, someone someone that I knew knew someone who could who could do it. And then you know I, I paid this guy a little bit of money, and and eventually we were able to deliver that. And so that was like one of my first encounters with a few things. I, from that experience alone, I learned you don't have to be ready. You don't have because you will never be fully ready. Mm. You just got to do it. Um, and secondly, that was when I learned like the concept of making a profit arbitrage. Right. So I have a client, but I pay someone else to do it for a lesser price. And then the difference is the profit that I make. I'm like, wow. And if I could scale this to 10 or hundred times, I'm going to be rich, right? Like, yeah. so I mean, that, that's an oversimplification, obviously, but <laughs> that's the idea. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to condense into small 30 second TikTok videos to inspire people you know that hey there's there's a better way like you can you can try this out if you're tired of your nine to five right yeah you know. if you feel like you're not employee material like you like yourself you can try what i do and then achieve the same results as i did basically mm -hmm. right yeah nice nice but, but not just that i mean really I'm nothing against people who who prefer to work you know employees are great because people like me like I said, wouldn't make good employees. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're starting out a business, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So an employee will be great at that if they're willing to make that mindset switch, you know, to think like an entrepreneur, but work like an employee. That's the winning combo. That's quite rare in these days because like, um, you know, with all the content that's coming out on social media, mm -hmm. people will be like reinforcing be your own boss, you know, never settle for less and stuff like that. To find someone with that mindset, it's as rare as trying to, you know, mine for diamonds. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's rare, but it's not impossible though. Uh, but the thing is, I wouldn't want to employ someone like myself. Because then you know, in the back of their minds, they're just thinking, oh, I just need this to pay the bills. I'm just trying to build this other Something thing else, and then yeah. I'm just, you know, screw this, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this job. And so, yeah, from, from an employer's perspective, it's probably not the the type of people that, that ideally I would want to have on my team. Yeah. But again, it, it goes down to, to each individual. You know, we don't want to discriminate. I'm always just putting out disclaimers. I really don't want to get canceled at this point in my career. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to be, or the audience has to be a little bit more mindful of like what you want, right? If you're not up to the task or the challenge to scramble like, you know, Kyle does, right? You know, I get to f you really have to find your own solution from point A to point B to point C and D, and you know that that's, that that's the challenge that comes with being your own boss, right? If you're not late, if you're not ready to deal with that, then maybe employment is good for you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you just focus at one thing and you're good at that one thing, then that's probably where you add value, right? To a, to a team, right? Yeah. Uh, if you know you're not a very good employee, then you might want to, you know, and try out. Make videos on TikTok and become a TikToker <laughs> instead. Yeah, that's what you do. Yes. The most important thing is try, you know, and try, try, try again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, man. All right. So uh, being in the TikTok scene uh, for a while now, I want to bring this question up. What is the, and we know what is the, uh, ecosystem like now for TikTok. Are you talking about the app or are you talking about your community? The community and the app. Okay, well, like for yourself, like you, 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 do, you do content, put it up on TikTok, so you know you educate people and stuff like that, right? Right. Um, but now with like the different kind of, you know, what kind of trends, right? They are coming on TikTok now and they are overtaking it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what where do you see TikTok? Uh, in five years time when it comes to like actual actual um, educational content okay yeah so TikTok um, it's completely different than it was what three years ago mm -hmm. in 2020 when I started right um, it is not as easy as it is to blow up it's still possible but it's just not as easy so I, I got lucky I feel to mm -hmm. have started then when I, when I did so as far as the app goes I think it has gotten better with personalization, oh. with stuff you get on your FYP. Right. So all of us have a very unique and different experience on TikTok. Your FYP is going to look very different from mine. You know, I don't know. I mean, if you're into videography and, and camera gears and, and or gaming or whatever, then you probably see more of that stuff. And if I'm into 
uh, entrepreneurship or you know food reviews and stuff like that then that's what i'm going to see and i guess everybody by now would already know that um i think the personalization has gone a lot better what you've observed is that more of the trend based videos like the maxwell the cat or the capybara that we had a couple of weeks ago <laughs> capybara you know that's all <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was stuck in my head for weeks man um so if you're seeing a lot of that it just shows that you're probably watching a lot of those videos right or maybe liking commenting saving engaging with them mm -hmm. right and for me i still do see a lot of the educational videos because that's what you consume that's what i consume as yeah. part of my research largely i want to see what other people are saying right you know so uh, i'm not concerned with that because one of the principles that i've learned in creating content on social media is that it has to fall under one of these three like not really content pillars categories three categories yeah your content has to be either entertaining uh informative or inspiring if you have all three then you you win the bill yeah absolutely yeah. but it's not very common that you see content that has i've i've seen some where it can be entertaining inspiring and informative at the same time yeah but usually it's like a it's like a venn diagram <laughs> where you can pick two of the three in the mix you yeah. know what i mean it's, it's either or yeah yeah so for me what i try to do is i mean i don't think i'm very entertaining so i'm informative and sometimes i try to inspire by mm -hmm. showing them what's possible mm -hmm. you know i am planning to start a second tiktok just you know to to post all of the random clips really yeah i mean like a like a carl harrison too yeah or like whatever carl harrison <laughs> you know extras or yeah well, guys be sure to follow that um okay you know like to, to post all the outtakes from from today's recording uh, or whatever because nice. here's the thing with tiktok right like the algorithm is trained to learn the style of content that you put out and it shows it to their pool of audience mm -hmm. that is you know that they think or they know likes that type of stuff uh, so when i put out random content on my existing account right after two years of only talking about personal finance and business and i suddenly talk about food and do a food review video mm -hmm. and the audience i mean some of them might be interested because they've, they've seen me and they're familiar but others would be like what the heck is this guy doing he's he's the finance guy he's a business guy why yeah. is he talking about food i don't care yeah. about what he thinks about this 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 particular dish um so when that happens the engagement could drop and that sends a signal to the algorithm and then my you know future video is following that one could not uh, could possibly not perform as well mm. so it's better to just stick to this one niche if that's what you started out with and that's what the account um like blew up from you know yeah so the thing with TikTok is like you have to really keep consistent with the kind of content you put out. Absolutely. So if this child if this channel is all about finance, then finance it is. Right? Yeah. True, true and true. So if it's about food, food all the way. Mm -hmm. If you want to create something else, then you have to create a new account. Uh, or you know, another account. Usually like. in the words of Eminem, you only get one shot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you got to stick with that account yeah, all the way because, to see that topic. Like if you think about certain key figures, like who, who are some of the biggest influencers that, that come to mind? Right now mm -hmm. on TikTok? Or anywhere, just in general. Um, could the CEO be? <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> right? Like Shochu. Yeah, um, Shochi. Uh, it's Shochi. Yeah. Not Shochu. It's Chu Shochi. Um, I'm terrible with Chinese names. Man. <laughs> I feel so bad. You know when I go to parties or yeah. events and yeah. people introduce themselves <laughs> and it's a Chinese name and I'm thinking, oh shit. Sometimes I would even pull out my phone and type it on the on the note tab. Right. At least there's effort made there, you know. Because like, it's to hard. Try. Yeah. Like there was a time where I completely butchered it. Like I, I reversed <laughs> the, the order of the name. It was, yeah, I was so embarrassed after that. But okay, so, so Chi. Chu's, <laughs> Chu Shou Chi. Yeah. We all know and love him as like the hero of TikTok, right? Yeah. Or, or you know, they're, they're calling him daddy or zaddy or whatever, and there are all these different edits of him. And yeah. and um, that's, what you, that's what you know him as. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be weird if, I mean, maybe for him, he, he's like a unicorn. He's an exception because yeah. he is like, you know, the, the king of TikTok, the hero of, of, of TikTok that's yeah. here to save us all from being banned. Okay, let's just say there's this guy who talks about photography right right so he talks about all things camera and mm -hmm. and filmmaking photography and so you're used to that you go to him for photography advice yeah and then suddenly he starts talking about fitness it's <laughs> like this is my meal plan it's very cinematic beautiful shots yeah. because he's a photographer yeah. videographer but he starts giving you like his workout splits and things like that how likely are you going to follow that very unlikely right because yeah. 
you've put him in this box. You perceive him as the photography photography expert. guy. Yeah, it's like how back in school you would have your history teacher, your geography teacher, your mm-hmm. English teacher. Some of them may teach one or two subjects, but you kind of put them in those categories. This person talks only about this topic, right? And that's kind of how users behave on the internet as well. Yeah. So there again, back to the Eminem quote: "You only get one shot. You got to pick your niche and what you want to be known for in the internet." Because once you are famous, based on that, yeah, that's gonna be what you're gonna be stuck with. It's gonna be quite challenging to break out to, from to, that mold, to, to break out and pivot. One of the 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 exceptions is Gary V. Gary right. Vaynerchuk, right? Yeah. He started out with the the wine wine company, wine library, where he made videos about wine, and then he transitioned to talking about social media growth, and has now become the the king of social media. And he's not doing coaching, right? He's like, is he basically, yeah. Oh okay. He's uh, doing coaching for like uh, social media growth and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So it's like a you, he'll put out content where he'll um, share his mindset, right? And then like oh, you mean the content? Practice. Yeah, right. Yeah. I thought you meant like one to one coaching. I, I didn't know he was doing that. No, I, I'm not sure about that. Probably right. he does. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, I learned these two new terms and I'm always trying to keep up so I'm learning all the new Gen Z slangs <laughs> right to keep up with the times like yeah. you know words like Riz and Mid and oh. uh, Chugi or like whatever else these kids are, are, are saying today yeah. um, so there's the Millennial Pause and then there's the Gen Z Shake have you heard of them? Millennial Pause the Millennial Pause and the is, Gen Z Shake and the Gen Z Shake now it's not a dance okay, okay. It sounds like a dance <laughs> it does but it's not right. um, so um, the Millennial Pause is when they pick up the phone yeah they start recording and they say like, okay guys, you won't believe what happened today. That sort of thing. That's like a millennial pause based on what I understand. Oh, okay. The Gen Z shake is when they already start recording the camera. Right. So it's already recording and then they flip it up to them. And so they just get right into the point as if the camera's just been rolling and then they, they jump straight into, you know, whatever the, the, the content is right, that they're trying right. to deliver. So that's yeah. the Gen Z shake and yeah. then there's the millennial pause. Oh, okay. So that kind of show, shows you their... their have you, have you seen that in a, in a recent content before? I've like, been using that without even knowing what it meant. Oh, I've used really? both of them, yeah. So oh. I'd have my video, like, it's already recording, and I flip it up, and I start talking to the, to the camera. Oh. As if it was purely, you know, unintentional that it was done that way. Clearly, I'm a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> you do the millennial pause? Uh, oh, you don't do either of it. You're a boomer then. <laughs> Come on. Um, yeah. From what you're sharing with me is that Gen Z Check is you are sharing your life uncut. Mm-hmm. And then getting straight to it, but for millennial pause, you you have to curate it, right? You gotta right. Like plan right. it in mind, yeah. And that's just the nature of the two generations. I feel, yeah. Like yeah. millennials, I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. you've been trained to prepare for things and make sure it's polished and presentable. But Gen yeah. Z is like, okay, they share everything. Yeah, just let's just, just talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Keep it raw and authentic. So. Probably because millennial. You know, they prefer to have the privacy and stuff like that, you know. Like. No, the, the, there's a theory. There's a theory as to why millennials have the millennial pause. Oh, it was right. because the platforms that we were used to, mm-hmm. like Instagram or Facebook or whatever back in the day, yeah. would have the pause. When you start recording, you have to wait a second for it to start recording you. Oh, really? Haven't you experienced that? No. So, like, you can't you know, press it and then it starts recording right away. Ah. So, maybe we're conditioned to... To do Get that. Get used to that, that yeah. pause. Whereas the Gen Z's now with, with the apps today, you don't have to wait. You just hit record and then it starts recording right okay. instantly. All right. We got to get it with the times. We got to all start doing Absolutely, this. Absolutely, man. <laughs> yeah. Shake. All right. So, uh, Kyle, for yourself, all right. You know, in case you guys forget, uh, Kyle is a content creator, first and foremost, uh, content creator, right? Everything else, right, is true experience. And then he became what he is today. Mm-hmm. Right, so what is your day to day life as a content creator? Okay, I'm gonna be real honest with you. Um, I get up at four thirty five in the morning. I take a cold shower. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, I take a bulletproof coffee. Nice, and I hit the gym for two hours straight. That's no like excuses the rock for you. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, um, that's Jocko Willink, the Rock, all these guys, and then I meditate. You have created something for yourself, mm-hmm. and this something is your agency called. Cloud, Cloud Media. Cloud Media, right? Yeah, so I've got um, two great business partners that I'm working with um, mm-hmm. on, on this agency. It's been a lifelong dream of mine. Ever since I was in school, I've always wanted to have a marketing agency. Right. Just because I'm very passionate in in branding and crafting marketing messages, you know, and I've done that, but only in the capacity of a solopreneur. I'm mm. mostly just a one-man show with my, you know, two or three remote employees that I had based right. in the Philippines or India. Um, 
Whereas now we're an actual team with an office and, you know, with, with, with partners and investors. And so it's a, it's a really cool experience. And, you know, I get to work with a whole bunch of very diverse clients from many different industries. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been really fun. If you guys out there need help with marketing or, you know, any type of social media uh, um, um, promotion or, or creating ads. And, you know, if you want to level up your level of creatives, then we might be the best fit. That's right. Because that is my goal for this company, right? Because there are many digital marketing agencies mm -hmm. out here or yeah. in, the, in the world for that matter. But after having lived overseas, um, especially in Thailand, have you seen some of the Thai ads? Yeah. Bro, they're next level. They're right? creative ads. Absolutely. That's what they are, yeah. Right? There, there's this one that's really memorable. Like um, there's this one where the, like, the lights go off and there are all these ghosts. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no, I haven't. No? Oh, that's really, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I have to see that. I'll look it up and send you the link. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so many of these really creative Thai ads. And I feel like, why don't we have that here? You know, so that's my goal. I think it's it's a little bit ambitious um, mm -hmm. on my part, but I do want to you know take it one step at a time to try to raise the standards of the creatives that we get here in Singapore through through the work that my agency does. I think there there's definitely a potential there mm -hmm. because uh, probably why Singapore didn't have ads like that. Uh, or some of that we've known for for some time is maybe because it's the difference in culture, right? But now you know we've social media and like memes and candidness coming yeah. about. You that know? really transcends borders, right? Because yeah, yeah. memes, you know, it, it, it applies. It could it could start to you know pop up in your everyday ads nowadays. Yeah. You never know, right? I I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> All right. So if you guys are wondering like how this cloud is spelled, it's K L O U T. That's right. Yeah, you it's, can search it's it up. the word clout, but spelled funky with a K. And it's not because <laughs> my name is spelled with a K. It has nothing oh. to do with that. It's just, you know, coming up with the business name today is really hard because a lot of the names, uh, the, the good names are taken based on the, the URL, the domain names, mm -hmm. and then the, the social media handles. One of the things that I just simply can't stand is when a company has uh, domain names and social media handles that are not aligned to or, or, or do not match like what i mean is let's say the website has a dash in it yeah. something dash something.com and then the social media handle has an underscore on instagram and then it has a period on tiktok or you know what i mean yeah that just really irks me um it's your pet peeve it is my you pet just peeve. have to like air it out yeah and so he's calling I, you guys out anybody who's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> go change it um i i wanted to set up a, a company where everything can be the same across the internet mm. and so when we looked up the name cloud cloud.sg and thought hmm this is great because it's 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 one syllable it's just five letters which makes it easy for emails yeah. right like so everything's just at cloud.sg yeah um there's and, consistency there yeah yeah and it's in alignment with the with the work that we do what we're trying to do is to help our clients increase their clout if they're trying to get clout on these platforms, they're trying to build influence, then that's where we come in and help them. You know what I mean? So, nice. um, and, and yeah, so it, it's worked so far. It's been only like eight to 10 months since we incorporated this company and it's it's been growing well. So lots of fun. Glad to hear that, man. Cheers, bro. Thank Cheers. you for having me, man. All right. Since you mentioned five words, uh, you know, five letters that make up clout, right? Could uh -huh. you share with me five words that okay. um, describe clout to you? Damn, this is like one of those summer camps <laughs> where you have an acronym like yeah. K is for <laughs> kangaroo or I can't think of another word. Um, okay, five words to yeah. describe clout. Um, K. <laughs> oh, man. What word starts with K anyway? Not a lot of words starts with K. Unless in Malay, it's called komunikasi. I thought you were gonna say another word in Malay. I was like, "Oh, bro, don't go there, man." <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Um, mm, unorthodox, mm. ambitious, perhaps even overambitious, which is a good thing because you know the term overambitious usually is used in a negative connotation. Right? Yeah, like it's not a good thing to be. But for our clients, we want to be overambitious. We want to, we want to set really high goals for them, um, and and hopefully help them achieve them. So we've got unorthodox, uh, ambitious, content-centric. Content-centric. That's two words, but it has the hyphen and stitch it together. So it's technically one word. Yeah. So it's a, it's a content-centric. That's a cheat, guys. Like if you guys have, if you want to ever make things one word, right? <laughs> you, you have to just add a hyphen. <laughs> so that's what uh, cloud means to you. That, that, that's what it means to me and our, our team and to mm. our clients, you know, because we don't want to be just another marketing agency just to fulfill the work. Mm. 
、um, I think we want to fill in this void, the space that the marketplace largely lacks, which is in that. In, in you know, a lot of people throw out the term "think outside the box,"、yeah. but few actually do.、Hmm. And I mean, I, I wouldn't want to flatter myself and say that you know I'm one of those, but I aspire to do that to actually think outside the box and and come up with you know. Breakthrough, revolutionary ideas、mm-hmm. when it comes to creative marketing. It's cool. I'm looking. I'm going to look forward to seeing a content put、uh, out that、oh, yeah. really shows that out of the box. Absolutely, of man. Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right, guys, we've come to the end of the show, and as promised, Kyle will start free lens. I、uh, know free free styling. Free styling. Come on, man. I'll start doing the beatbox. <laughs> 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 that sounds like the Michael Jackson, you know that. <laughs> all right,、um, yeah, it's all right. We'll we'll do it on another episode, probably. I mean, or when, we can do it in outtakes. Oh yeah, yeah, we can do that on the outtakes. Yeah. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been fun talking to you, bro. All right, thank you so much, Kyle, for being on the show. You have listened to you care not, and you know,、uh, it's it's great having you here.、Uh, it definitely gives a different perspective to you know a content creator. Right, we 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 kind of did have a content creator before,、mm-hmm. uh, but it was different because she was a beauty influencer. So if you guys are interested in knowing a little bit more about beauty influence, being a being、uh, being a beauty influencer, and then check the episode out.、Uh, but do give a like and subscribe to you care not, and you know check out Kyle Harrison's、uh, TikTok account and his business cloud. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace. I got one question for you.、Yep. You okay or not? <laughs> okay, bro.